Hey y'all, so here we are, the last four chapters of The Great Hunt, which is the second book in Robert Jordan's Will of Tom series. So here we go. Chapter 47 is The Grave is No Bar to My Call, and we are back with the group of guys, and they are pretty desperate. There, There's both of these armies, you know, warring right now, and Matt blows the horn. Um, I should say, that I can't believe Matt blows the horn. But am I really surprised? No, I'm not. Archer Hawkwing shows up and his other warriors and they help turn the tide of this battle. And before they start riding off with their battle cries, they basically confirm that Rand is the Dragon Reborn in front of everyone, including Matt, Perrin, and Huron. They call him Luz Theron and Rand doesn't try to correct them. So I feel like this is a big moment for Rand. It's He's kind of losing some of his delusions and his reluctant hero mantra. They tell him that they are called forth for, by the horn, but they will ride under his banner. So Perrin pulls out the banner and has it flying. So now Archer Hawkwing and all of his warriors are flying under the dragon's banner and they start just wreaking havoc. They are turning the tide of the battle. We don't get to really see a lot of the battle. We get a few little snippets, but the main focus is on Rand and Balsamon, who have appeared. They are fighting and, of course, talking. Balsamon is constantly telling him that he can help him and that he's going to kill him if he doesn't serve, so that's not surprising. Now, during this sword fight, Rand uses the balancing move, the balancing sword move that Ingtar earlier in some previous chapters actually kind of gave him some shit about using because it's, it's just a balancing move but it leaves the person completely open to attack basically and so Ingtar is saying that if he ever saw someone using this stance, this move, that he would probably just have to thrust his sword into the guy even if it meant opening up himself. So I remember this conversation and it's one of those things that at the time when I read it, I didn't really even think to say anything in the video. I, I just, it, it just kind of is a conversation that happened. I don't know. And uh, Rand does this move because he's willing to sacrifice himself to kill Balsamon. Um, he knows it has to be him and that's what he goes for and it works. Balsamon does get lured into this trap where he stabs Rand in the side with his staff and Rand in turn stabs Balsamon in the heart with his heron marked blade. So we move on into chapter 48 which is first claiming. This is a very short little chapter that is more about relationship building than anything else. Min fills a pool and she finds Rand. He is unconscious. He has a very bad wound. He's very cold to the touch. So she manages to find an empty home and she drags him in there, gets him into the bed, you know, to try to heal him. But she's afraid that if she goes off to find Nynaeve that he will be dead before she gets back. So she actually crawls into the bed to try to give him some of her body warmth because he has no body heat. That even the blankets aren't going to help keep him warm because there's nothing there. My cat is being psycho. Anyway, then as she's laying there, Egwene comes in and she's kind of taken aback and Min kind of says some mean things to Egwene about how Egwene basically cast Rand aside and how Egwene shouldn't be mad that Min wants to pick Rand up since Egwene cast him aside and didn't want him. So Egwene is a bit upset at this point. Egwene also mentions that Elaine had felt Rand's pull. Nynaeve doesn't. So I feel like we're kind of getting into like I don't know a love I, is it a square if they don't if the girls don't love each other like that I don't know we're getting into multiple romance options for Rand and sometimes I, I'm not a big fan of love triangles whatever parallelograms that this is but I'm also weirdly okay with it because I feel like sometimes in fantasy novels it is just someone falls in love with this one person and that is it for the rest of their life now, I don't feel like that's really necessarily realistic because people date several people, you know, at least nowadays, before they settle on who they are going to be with for the rest of their lives. And so it, it makes sense, but it's also just very weird and because it's still kind of with that air of you're with one person for life, you don't really date around. 
so it's it's very weird ultimately I don't really care for it but I understand that it's going to cause some dynamics and some tension some drama going on so we're just going to go with the flow and Rand is a ladies man pretty much and I guess I shouldn't be surprised because he's the chosen one so Min also mentions when it's just her and Rand he's still unconscious but he mentions that another woman is going to come into play so maybe we'll meet her in the next book chapter 49 what was meant to be now in this chapter we learn quite a few things. Lanfear comes and basically kind of stakes her claim on Rand and I'm kind of wondering if she is the person this woman that Min mentions. Um, so that's gonna be cool to find out. Basically everyone but Min and Moraine have left to go back to Tar Valen before Rand has woken up from being unconscious from his fight. So I'm hoping that at this point Matt is going to finally get healed but once again we're just kind of splitting the party there's no telling what is going to happen at the beginning of the dragon reborn because we're splitting up the group once again so rand's blade is basically ruined half of the blade is gone and i have a hard time dealing with characters who lose their iconic items so like harry potter with his wand his first wand i lamented that loss forever it's just when there's an item that kind of makes a character like it's very iconic for him like with rand and his hair and marked blade it really just bothers me when they lose this item and i am very curious to see if he is somehow able to get it replaced that's that's what i'm hoping for because i feel like it's so strange that he would lose something this important this iconic this early in the series. So we learn that Karahan is in Civil War. No one is surprised. We also learn that Rand and the Dark One actually fought their battle in the sky, which when they mentioned that I thought it was weird, but then I remembered that Rand doesn't remember landing for the fight. So I think that's actually kind of cool and interesting that everybody got to see this fight, but of course the Dark One is not completely dead. However, three of the seven seals that hold the Dark One basically jailed are now broken so we're slowly whittling down these seven seals um moraine explains that pat and thane and more death actually merged and have created this really weird terrifying bad guy that we're gonna have to deal with um the most exciting thing is that perrin and loyal are still with rand perrin and loyal are my two favorite characters followed by nynaeve so I'm really glad that Perrin and Loyal are still together with Rand. So Rand understands that he has a big decision to make. And so he says that iconic quote that has come up a couple of times, death is lighter than a feather, but duty is heavier than a mountain. And Rand makes his decision. We don't know what that decision is, but I'm hoping that he will finally accept his role as the chosen one, as the dragon reborn. I feel like that's a possibility because the next book is called The Dragon Reborn, but we'll talk more about that in the wrap up and predictions video. So in chapter 50, it's very short, just a couple of paragraphs, but basically it's kind of saying that all of these stories of Ardor Hawkwing coming back and destroying the Children of the Light under the banner of The Dragon Reborn, all of that has happened. It's basically going far and wide. This battle is going to be very well known across the land, and I kind of wish that we were able to see more of that battle, but that's okay. So that is the end of the Great Hunt. So it was a wild ride. I'm going to have another video next week completely wrapping up the entire book. So we'll kind of talk a little bit more about the book as a whole. And I'm also going to go into my predictions for The Dragon Reborn. I'm really excited about it. So I will see you all next week. Y'all are as good as gold. Y'all take care. Bye.